Welcome to the Ringer NFL show. Shiel Kapadia here. Welcome if you're watching on FanDuel TV or if you're listening on Spotify, joined by my friends Steven Ruiz and Deontay Lee. Ruiz, we're all in the same room. That's know, incredible. Maybe, maybe we should fight. Maybe we got to tell you, you mentioned throwing some stuff off the table. Who knows where these arguments will lead to, Deontay? Uh, I'm ready to bring back up uh, Kyler Murray and Brock Freddy today. <laughs> I think this will be a good week for us to finally hash this out. Who knows? There were some blowouts in Week 7. There were some close games in Week 7. There will be some narratives shaping after Week 7. As we know, we're going to talk about the three biggest games, what we learned from them to start out here. First one, Detroit Lions, Minnesota Vikings comes down to the end. Lions win that game 31-29. Ruiz, what did, what did we learn about the Vikings and Sam Darnold and Brian Flores or the Lions and Ben Johnson and Jared Goff? What was kind of your big takeaway from this yeah, game? I think this game was about Jared Goff and what he did under pressure. He was pressured on over half of his dropbacks in this game. We've seen him have success against Brian Flores. We talked about that on the Friday show. But in those games last year, those two games, it was like the ideal environment for a Jared Goff game. This was not. This is an yeah. a environment he struggles against, and he thrived. He averaged nearly 15 yards per attempt under pressure in this game. Yeah. So it's not like Flores wasn't getting pressure. He was just getting beat. Yeah, it was uh, it was an impressive pro I mean, my thing with the Lions, I'm just like, they're the best team in the NFC right yeah. now. Partially because of that, uh, you know, the run game. Put, I like the way this game moved, Deontay, yeah. where it started out. It's rocky. You're going, uh-oh. Like Ruiz mentioned on Friday, is this going to be one of those Jared Goff games? Then they come back, and I feel like it gets, you know, it's, they don't get enough credit, but Four straight touchdown drives against that Vikings defense to do that uh, was incredible. So uh, I think the Lions are the best team in the NFC right now. I'm with you. And the thing that I think I was maybe most encouraged by was that they were able to find success multiple ways, right? And I think that that was what we talked about a lot for the Friday show, is that the one thing that Brian Flores is going to do, it's force you into uncomfortable situations and make you have to change the way you play specifically to attack this defense. And I thought that Jared Goff did a really good job of that. Uh, first of all, in the play-action game, I thought he he did a good job of being conservative, taking the check downs when guys were bailing out in zone coverage and allowing his running backs, allowing his tight ends to go get him yards after the catch. And then I think that he didn't panic in those third down pure drop back situations where Brian Flores is really loading up the line of scrimmage with potential blitzers, whether they're dropping or whether they're bringing guys from unconventional spots. I thought that he was smart with knowing when to take his chances downfield. We saw some good throws in the seam to Amon Ross St. Brown. We saw him not be afraid to work the middle of the field period against these mixes of looks, whether it was playing quarters or cover two or just straight man or a zero look. I thought that he was confident in all of his answers. And I think that speaks not only to Ben Johnson, who I know deserves a lot of credit for this, this, but like you said, to Jared Goff for knowing how to execute against this defense when he's not in an ideal situation, not up by two scores and not playing in a game script that's most favorable to I, him. I thought the long touchdown pass to Amon Ross St. Brown was like the best illustration of the development of Jared Goff. He kind of had a sidestep, a free rusher or yep. just pressure right in his lap to make that throw all the way downfield. It reminds me of the the fourth down against the 49ers in the NFC mm -hmm. title game where he kind of has to move to the side and that makes him miss the throw, ends up being dropped because it's a tough, tough catch. I don't know if Jared Goff from last year makes that throw that he made to St. Brown in this game. Well, and if you take it all the way back to what it looked like when the Rams lost the Super Bowl in 2018 to the Patriots. He's obviously not that quarterback. And there's a lot of conversation to be had about how much distance he has to make up to get into the top tier of quarterbacks. But what I think we saw today and what we saw really over the last 20 plus games of regular season from him is that he's a quarterback that's good enough to be in these situations and he can deliver. You may not be able to count on it as consistently as those tier one quarterbacks that we all know and are easy to identify. But I think that he's shown that there's probably a bigger gap between he and the rest of the quarterbacks that are not in tier one than there is between him and those tier one quarterbacks and you should feel really good about that if you're the Lions right now I do think like the difference between him and the top quarterbacks is the ability to extend and make yep. plays under yeah. pressure but behind that offensive line in, in this offense he doesn't really have to do that to the extent that those players do he doesn't have to be Josh Allen or Mahomes right. and he's averaging 11 yards per attempt under pressure this year right so it, he's doing it he's doing what those top quarterbacks do even though it's manufactured right how many games are we going to have where it's like third quarter 
Jared Goff is 16 for 16. Right. It's like, what? 16? Now, he, he, there were some sacks uh, mixed in there. But, I mean, he finishes this game 22 for 25 for 280 yards, four touchdowns. I thought that last drive was a great sort of summation of all the mm-hmm. things you're talking about. They're running the ball. They schemed up a beautiful play to Jam- Jameer Gibbs. Jared Goff is making tough throws. So, uh, if you're the Lions, you got to feel good. I mean, they faced a lot of adversity. Like, even when they're kicking out there, I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot they, 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 they lost their kicker yep. in the summer. They lose eight. Hutchinson they've had different guys be injured and here they are they just keep moving on and if you can put together that offensive performance against that defense uh and we've seen what that defense has done, not against the Niners and the Texans yep. and some other teams. So it's not like they haven't been tested. Uh, just a really impressive performance from the Lions. What about the, the Vikings, Ruiz? Do you look at them differently? Do you think, you know, what, what's the difference between what you thought about the Vikings on Friday versus what you think about the Vikings now? I don't know if it changed that much. I think I agree we've with seen that, that, by that the this way. defense isn't like isn't going to just beat everyone it comes across. It's not going to be the number one defense, probably. I don't think they have the talent to be the number one defense. They've been carried by scheme so far. And when you come into a game against an offensive coordinator like Ben Johnson, you're going to lose some of those battles. But I did think the the Lions defense looked good without Aiden yeah. Hutchinson. Like, it wasn't a, the greatest performance, but it was an average performance. And that's all they need right now <laughs> with the way the offense is playing. I do think Darnold, you, you see... You saw both sides of Darnold in this game. Yep. You saw the high level throw, the downfield He's throw. Trying, throw to yeah, yep. I can see the devil and the angel <laughs> in his head right now. He's like, Do I want to do this right That's now? That's why he prefaced it with you all know, the good he, stuff with the Vikings. He's like, yeah. Yeah. Nice. He he's like Shield might to bring up Purdy later, so I need to save some energy. <laughs> all, right, all right, but sorry, go to interrupt. But me. no, that's always going to be the question mark with this team. Like, who, what else are you going to question on it? You're not going to question the play calling yep. with O'Connell. You're not going to question the receiving core with Jefferson and now Addison making a big play. The run game, Aaron Jones looks fantastic. Fantastic. Looked fantastic yeah. again in this game. Yep. Had that first touchdown. I mean, Darnold has to be the question mark. There's a reason why they drafted a quarterback in the first round. I know Darnold wasn't on the roster yet, but if they really believed in Darnold, they wouldn't have drafted a quarterback. And ultimately, this offense moves the ball okay. I just think in those high leverage situations, especially in the second half, to the point that we're having about quarterback playing tough situations, you saw all the ways that Darnold could have made a difference if he was a ceiling-raising quarterback and what he has to resort to because he's not. Right, I do think that it was a little bit too easy in the second half for Detroit to really play sticky coverage on Justin Jefferson, on Jordan Addison, and put Donner in the uncomfortable situations where now he has to extend. And you see that it's not he can't always extend, get his feet res- get his feet reset, and then push the ball downfield. He's not always going to make a guy miss and then go get 10 to 12 yards on a scramble when he finds air. And those opportunities were there because you know Detroit's going to play a lot of man coverage. Yeah. So I do think you should probably feel okay if you're a Vikings fan. Obviously, when you zoom out and think about preseason expectations versus where they stand presently, but even in a game like this against a team that you know is a top-end contender, you can go punch for punch with a team like that. I do just think that you got a clear look in those third down and obvious passing situations in the fourth quarter when you know that you have to drive the length of the field, that there are just going to be some limitations with Darnold, and it does put a little bit more stress on Kevin O'Connell. You should probably just feel okay because you have probably one of the five best play callers in the NFL, and I think if they landed in a situation again, they'll probably be able to play step for step with just about anybody in the league if they needed to. Yeah, I don't feel I don't feel much differently about him because I, you know, I think we've probably been on a similar wavelength with Darnold where he, he's playing way better than I thought he was going to play this year. I will for admit sure. that. I didn't think he even had uh, this ceiling in him and they had the ball with what? 416 left yep. where it's like do not give Detroit the ball back here and they run it twice and then it's Darnold on third down and they have to punt it uh, back to the Lions. But I'll tell you what, that Vikings defense, I mean, forget scheme and just the way they play is so, I mean, their relentlessness in trying to take the ball away yeah. on every single play in every situation, and it paid off in a big way. I mean, it flipped the game uh, in this game when they when Josh Metellus knocks it out yeah. uh, of David Montgomery's hands. And it's just, I was just thinking that as I'm watching them, I'm like, they're giving up touchdown drives, but I'm just like, no defense in the NFL plays like this. Uh, I love this. That's going to keep them in every game. No, and they bounce back in the second half. Like Detroit yeah. was marching up and down yep. the field yep. in the first half, and you thought, oh, well, they lost. Like Flores lost the game planning war, and I don't know if he's going to be able to adjust. And it looks like a forty point game for Detroit, but that didn't happen in the second half. They, they stopped him in the second yeah. half. Golf has that one drive late, but I I would still feel optimistic about this defense going forward, even for if sure. it's not going to be that number one EPA defense in the league. Yeah. Still going to be top ten, top five. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that battle between those two was fun because early on, Flores was getting to golf, and then the Lions figure it out, and then, like you said, the Vikings come back. So I think it did live up to the hype in that way. All right.